Second Corinthians chapter 3. It says, Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Nevertheless, when any one of us turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So I'll give a real life example. I have a friend who was about to get married. And when she was about to get married, she never knew that the way people saw her was not what she really was. But she didn't know. So she was always just living her life the way she was. Then God revealed to her and said, look, there's a veil over you that I need to take away that they may see you. She's lived 30 something years of her life that way. This is the way I am. Nobody, you know, you know that this is how I am or this is the way I am. But God said there's a veil over you that when people, they don't see the real you. They're seeing somebody else, but you don't know. And you're saying this is just the way I am. So God took away the veil. And then the real person God had called out to be was made manifest. 17, can we go to 17? Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That's why we can sit down like this and worship God. That's why you can be free to praise God anyhow you like. That is why you don't have to be in bondage in following after the Lord. Because wherever his spirit is, there's liberty. 18. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. This for me is what I would describe as worship. Every time we're worshiping God, this is what is happening. I cannot be the same. It's not possible. That's why I don't waste worship. I'm engaging God and I believe very strongly that something is dropping, something is changing. Because Christ, we're, we're just trying to get transformed into the very image of Christ. So every time we behold, we're beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we're being transformed into that image of him. Can we go to the next scripture, John 8, 32. He said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, a lot of us are struggling with things that we don't know the truth about. And I'll use myself as an example. I used to struggle with I was not very sickly, but sometimes I'll fall sick. But one day when I discovered the truth about the fact that I don't have to be sick, it's not God's emo for me, it's not God's DNA for me to be sick. All I needed to know was the truth. And how did that truth come about? The truth came about from a story. And this is a real life story. There was a madman that used to hang around Ikoi here, yeah? And one of our pastors always seen this madman everywhere, walking about every day. And one day he said to God, ah, God, this guy, I see him digging from rubbish. I see him eating from rubbish every day because he's been in the dustbin and dump sites, picking food and picking dirt. And like, how come this guy... Day after day, I keep seeing him. He's not going to the hospital to say he wants to collect drugs. And God said to him, the demons that are possessing the man 
cannot allow him fall sick. So, what does that do? That means that if you have the spirit of God, eh? or you have demons, if you have the spirit of God in you, then what does that tell you? That's why it says, if this very same spirit which raised Christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you and I, is able to quicken our mortal body to life. See, that truth just was like a light bulb in my life. And just being exposed to that truth. This was like seven years ago. I can count how many times I've fallen sick. Because of that truth. Another area I struggled with, finances. A lot of us struggle with finances. I'm broke today. I have money tomorrow. It's my normal emo. I'm always looking for money. I want money. Do you understand? Know but when I realize that I have a father who has my needs, eh, is his priority. My needs is his priority. He says, before you ask, I know. He says, I will supply all your needs according to his riches. He didn't say out of his riches. He says, according to. So if he supply my need according to his riches, then I need more than I have. So when I started to get exposed to truths in certain areas of my life, it doesn't mean all areas of my life are set free. No, I'm still seeking the truth concerning certain areas of my life. But this scripture is so profound. And one of the things God said to me today is that in this meeting, as we worship, as we discuss, he will be revealing his truth to us in different areas of our lives. And we will be set free. <laughs> 